Hi, I'm Kim. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to make veg vegetarian vegan meatloaf. Um, I'm going to start by telling you when, when you when you made meatloaf when you were little and you used hamburger, you started out with hamburger and eggs and then you added things to it. So I want you to imagine that we're going to start out with nuts. Instead of using hamburger, I've processed almonds and I use raw almonds that look kind of like this. They're not roasted, they're not fried, they're just raw almonds. I process them and I added about three quarters of a cup of, of um, raw almonds to my pan. And then we're going to use veggie meat. I happen to use it using Morningstar. There's a lot of different products you can use. It's what I have in my freezer. I don't use a whole package. I really try hard to cut back on some of these processed veggie meat products. They're high in salt and some of them are really high in fat so you have to be careful. We're going to add about half a package to it. And this is, I want you to imagine that this is like your hamburger that you would start with when you were little. I know my mom always started with a pound of hamburger and from there she used to add some really interesting ingredients. And this is the core. Now you want to be creative with what you have. And I'm going to take you through what, what I add to my meatloaf, but you can add, take away. The first thing I start with is some chopped garlic. And I like a little bit of heat in my food. You'll learn that the more you cook with me. So I've, I've um, chopped up some jalapenos without the seeds. If you add the seeds, you're going to get more heat. Then I have grated up some carrots and add the carrots to it. I forgot to mention how many carrots I used. I would say about three full-sized carrots you want to grate up. Again, your garlic really depends on how much garlic you like and your jalapeno. I added a half of a jalapeno for our family. About three cloves of garlic. You could add four or five depending on what you like. This I've chopped up. I always chop up way more than I need and then I can freeze later. This is about three onions. We're going to add about one to two onions, depending on how much you like onions. I'm going to put that in there and just keep this for leftover, put it in a baggie, use it later. Always chop more than you need because when you're a vegetarian and you use a lot of vegetables, if you're in the chopping mode, go ahead and do it ahead of time. Then I cook some oatmeal. I used instant oatmeal. It cooks really fast and it's about a half a cup of oatmeal to about a cup of water. Put your oatmeal in there. I added chopped up two celery sticks, real fine. Brewer's yeast, these are brewer's yeast flakes. Two teaspoons of brewer's yeast flakes. You can add a little more if you'd like. It gives it that nice cheesy flavor to it. Sprinkle that on. Breadcrumbs, and I always process 100% whole wheat breadcrumbs. This is about four um, slices of 100% whole wheat bread. Put that in there. Pepper, I would say about a teaspoon of pepper. I'm really, I don't measure real well because I know what my family likes in terms of heat and spice. But about a teaspoon. Thyme. I'm going to add a teaspoon of thyme. To it. And then before you add the ketchup, you want to mix it up a little bit. Just mix in your breadcrumbs there. It's got some moisture in it because you put your oatmeal in it. Your ketchup, about a quarter cup. Again, a quarter cup of ketchup. You can add more or less if you like. What I'd like you to do is put your hands in here and mix it up just like you would if you were making a meatloaf. Take your time. Get your hands in there. Move it around a little bit. And you're going to put this in the oven at about 350. 
And I put mine in the loaf pan. If you want to put it on a cookie sheet and form it into a patty, make a meatloaf, you can do that. Looks just like the traditional meatloaf. My kids love this recipe. My father-in-law loves it. It's very traditional, feel-good, filling kind of meal. It makes great when you have leftovers. Do you remember the old-fashioned meatloaf sandwiches? It makes a great meatloaf sandwich. My kids like that too. Use your loaf pan. I oiled mine with a little bit of olive oil in it. Put your meatloaf down in. And again, if you think there's something that you would like to add to this that your parents added when they made meatloaf when you were growing up that's more traditional, then go ahead and add it. Pat it down. And there you have almond vegan meatloaf. Hi, I'm Kim. Welcome back to my kitchen. The last time you were with me in my kitchen, we were making vegan meatloaf, which is one of those really good, feel-good, cold night dinners. You can't have meatloaf without mashed potatoes, so I thought I would end it properly with some mashed potatoes. I boiled up some organic, mashed, or some organic potatoes. I did not take the skin off. There's lots of nutrients in the skin, so I wouldn't worry about taking the skin off. And we're going to add a few things to this. Again, you start out with the base and you add the things that you think your family would like. I'm going to start out with a little bit of garlic powder and I just kind of sprinkle it in there. If you had to have a uh, measurement, I would probably add a teaspoon of garlic powder, uh, maybe a teaspoon of salt, about that much. Don't add too much. Again, salt is one of those things that I think we get addicted to. So you can cut back on it and by adding other herbs and spices that will help you. Some pepper. Pepper never hurt anybody. So I would say about a teaspoon of pepper. Black pepper. And I cut up some, some onions, some green onions. Chop them up nice and fine. Other ideas for you are parsley. Nobody likes parsley. If you're in a hurry, you could add dried chives, you could add dried parsley, anything to give it a little bit of color. You're going to have to add some soy milk. Um, try to use organic if, you, if possible. You just uh, This is about two cups of milk, and I'm just going to add it as needed and get my potatoes the consistency that I want, I want them to be. They have a product out called Tofuti Sour Cream. And it's kind of fun to use in your potatoes, but keep, be careful. It does have oil, a lot of, a fair amount of oil in it. You don't want to add a lot, but it gives it a nice creamy texture. I, I would say about maybe an eighth to a quarter of a cup. I don't add a lot. If your family would like to put some more on it, they can add it to it after you've made it. Get all your ingredients in there, move it around with your mixer, start blending it. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to need some more milk because I've only added about a cup of milk and I think I have about a half a bag of potatoes in here. I'm going to need some more milk. Do you remember that cheese sauce we made? I made a veget vegan cheese sauce. It's kind of an Italian base. You could put cheat the cheese sauce in here too if you'd like. It'll give it more of a cheesy flavor without adding any animal products. So try that too. I'm going to keep blending. I don't know how you like your potatoes. I like mine sort of not too, you know, not too runny and creamy, kind of thick. Um, let's see how that tastes. And you can see the skins in there. I think the skins give it a little bit of color. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. But you can make your own mushroom gravy. But have this with your meatloaf and it will be delicious. Join me again and we will have meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Thanks for coming. Hi, welcome back. I'm Kim. Our meatloaf, our veggie meatloaf is finished. Our mashed potatoes are finished. What I did is I took this out of the pan and just tipped it upside down to look like a traditional meatloaf. 
and you want to cut the end off and place it on your plate. You can put ketchup or Worcester sauce. They have vegan Worcester sauce, which is really good. Put some peas on. My kids are big fans of peas. Some mashed potatoes. I mentioned to you that we had some vegan cheese. And if you'd like to just drizzle it over the potatoes, that would be good. Or you could even drizzle it over the macaroni and cheese. Let's see. Mmm. That's delicious.